Hey everybody, welcome back to Sounds Like a Drum, Cadence Independent Media Production. Today is a special kind of deep dive thing for us that we felt would be helpful to just about everybody. We've gotten a lot of questions about it. We're going to do a real-time snare side head and snare wire installation and just kind of talk about it as it goes. Okay, so this is really, really, really important for your sound. Um, I know that a lot of people have questions about it, uh, just in terms of what the actual process is, and I know that we do move through things quickly here sometimes, so today's gonna be a slow jam for those of you that are into that. Um, and basically it goes like this. We pulled out our pearl snare that we have here all of the time and thought to ourselves, let's change everything on the bottom of this drum. So, first things first, we have the bottom hoop, we have a key, and we have a snare side head. Now, for a fresh snare side head, it doesn't matter where the logo is, you can do whatever you want with that. Um, I oftentimes put it inside the hoop like this before I put it on, just to sort of make sure it's touching everywhere, make sure that the head is good, that the edge is good, that the actual flesh hoop is not bent or anything like that, which can happen sometimes, not very much, but it does happen. And I'll set this whole contraption right on top of the drum. Now what I'm going to do next is make sure and place the tips of all the screws in the receptacles on the lugs. This is to make sure that the hoop is lined up also because you don't want to have your lugs going in crooked, especially if you have lugs on your drum that are not wiggleable, like if you have tube lugs or something like that that don't have an insert like these do. Now the next thing is, bring everything up, we'll call it finger tight, but really it's just in contact with the hoop. I'm not actually going to tension them down, I just want all of the screws touching the hoop. All right, cool. Now, step three, this is sort of my personal thing. If you've watched older videos, you'll recognize this. This is taking a ruler and making the hoop level with the edge of the drum. Now, it's worth mentioning that uh, snare beds will influence this a little bit. Uh, I have drums that prefer to just have the hoop flat, which is to say that where the snare beds dip down, the measurement is a little bit different. My Keplinger is like that. Um, but then on the other hand, the Craviatos are down with just measuring the height all the way around to the same measurement, and that makes them happy. So experiment a little bit with this, but uh, having your measurements be the same all the way around, including the drop in the snare bed, is manageable. If you have very narrow snare beds, like in a very old drum, or I've, like, I played a Joyful Noise snare once that had very narrow and kind of deep snare beds, um, we're just talking about where the lugs are at. You don't have to go down in the snare bed because that's just uh, not really going to be easy to adjust. So what this involves is getting your ruler and then you have to pick up the drum. You place the ruler, whichever bit of it you want to use, I guess I'll use this side, and you look across the edge of the hoop at basically measurement of the height from the bearing edge to the top of the hoop, and I want to make all the lugs have the same height to start with. So this isn't a lot of tension at all, this is just enough to hold the lugs in place, to hold the screws in place. At this tension I don't do a star pattern or anything like that because we're at such a low degree of tension, we're not going to get some spot that has way more tension than somewhere else.
Okay. Now, depending on the type of hoops you have uh, and the stiffness of that type of hoop, die cast, triple flange, all that stuff, you'll be able to afford more of a deformation where the snare beds are um, with a softer hoop, with a stiffer hoop. You might end up with some of these lugs feeling incredibly loose. This one's actually not even touching. But as we start to bring tension down on everything, it's going to even out in the end. And don't be afraid if this is dipping a little bit at the snare beds because even if we were going just in terms of pitch and trying to make every lug the same pitch, you would still have to cinch these ones down further in terms of this actual, like how many threads are exposed to get the same tension everywhere else because as we know, unless you don't have snare beds, the bottom of a snare drum is not a level bearing edge. It's got dips on two sides. Now in terms of the ruler, we've got everything leveled. It does mean that a couple of the lugs are extremely loose and the ones around the snare bed are a little bit tighter. These ones are also a little bit tighter. So we kind of have four that are not so tight and then six that are tighter. Now that we've done this, the head is pretty soft. So I'm gonna now do the star pattern I'm not listening to anything yet. I'm just gonna raise the tension until I feel like the actual pressure and overall sound of the head is good and not listen to individual lugs. This is feeling fairly tight, not choked, but you know, in a good spot for a snare side head. And when we go around and tap, we may discover that some of the lugs are not the same pitch as other lugs. They're not all quite the same. I subscribe to the idea that most of the time the snare side head does not need to be perfectly in tune with itself. We want it to be close, but we don't really need to ham and haw too much about each lug being exactly the same pitch because we're dealing with a bearing edge that's not level. Uh, the way that a super thin head like this will deform to the unlevel bearing edge uh, helps with this, but particularly with a fresh head that hasn't had time to kind of settle and conform, don't stress out about it too much. I'm going to adjust a couple of them that were a little further out than the rest. But other than that, at this point, we're in a pretty good place. It's turning out to be the ones at the snare beds. They need like a quarter turn more. Now, this is basically where I normally would go ahead and put the wires on and check out the sound and then maybe make some overall tension adjustments or a little bit of adjustment to the topography by changing some of the lugs. But I wanna stop and address real quick that when you're putting on a new snare side head, depending on the structure of your drum, the shape of the bearing edges, the hoops, everything, you may see some wrinkles in the head even at this point where there's a fair amount of tension on it, especially if you have very deep or very narrow snare beds. Wrinkles are not necessarily the enemy, and tensioning the snare side head in terms of I don't want to see wrinkles, so I'm going to keep going till I don't see them, is really not necessary to do. If you're after a tight snare side for whatever reason that you might want that, and there are many, fine. But if you see some wrinkles, that's not a like a death sentence to the sound of your drum at all. And depending on the structure of your drum, the construction of the actual edge on the snare side, like especially with some really old drums like, you know, Ludwig's from the 20s and old Slingerlands and stuff where, you know, the bearing or rather the snare bed's like an inch across and kind of pounded in deep, you might not be able to get them out. And that doesn't matter. It's okay. Um, I've, I've had several drums that, that was just part of the deal. It is worth noting that if you're getting them away from the snare beds, you might have a hoop that's bent, or you might have an uneven bearing edge, like an actual bearing edge. And that could be a problem that needs to be addressed, but it's also gonna make the head difficult to tune, and you're gonna notice that like to get the wrinkles out, there's gonna be a dip in the hoop in an odd spot. So 
actual structural problems are a little more obvious than just being like, oh man, I see some wrinkles you know, on the head somewhere. So don't freak out about that. It's not a huge deal. Um, as long as you're getting the sound that you want. The look, is, it's hard, it's hard, but the look is not the thing that matters. It's does it sound good or not, that's it. All right, so let's put some wires on. We pulled out what we had, which today happens to be these super interesting 12 strand EQ wires, which I've definitely never used and have no idea what they're gonna do, but I'm psyched about it, so we're gonna find out. And installing these, we chose this drum because it's a modern drum. It doesn't have any of the older style mechanisms where you have to tie the strings on or any of that stuff. This is pretty run of the mill in terms of the way that the mechanics function on the snare side and also uh, the butt plate. So we're just gonna lay these guys on the drum. This is also a time to look at the wires and see if there's any that are bent or that aren't laying flat or if they're crimped in in any kind of funny way. Um, any of that stuff will affect the sound to some degree. Um, I'm a fan of nylon string for this kind of thing. Um, I'm not a fan of anything that has wire in it because it can damage your heads, it can damage uh, the edge of your drum if it's cinched up really tight. Uh, and then it also can get off center and cause this, the wires to not pull straight. Now for me, I like to do the butt plate side first. Um, it's habit and also there's a little bit of a functionality reason for that too. So we're gonna start with that end. I'm gonna turn this so you can see it. All right. So we're gonna run the string through the ends of the wires. Um, it's also important to note that we, uh, we cut these from a longer length of string, and if you're doing that, you're gonna wanna burn the ends with a match or a lighter just a little bit um, to keep them from fraying because they're nylon, so they will melt a little bit, which is nice, um, and that'll keep any kind of fraying issues in the future from happening so you can use the strings for a while. Run them through the holes in the hoop. Go ahead and loosen the screws on the butt plate a bunch before you get started so you have a nice gap to feed them through. I, uh, regardless of the butt plate type, I'm a fan of putting the strings right against the screws because that's where the most pressure is going to be when you cinch them down. And over tightening these is just going to result in stripping out the screws eventually, so we don't want to have to do that. Um, if you find them slipping when you use strings, you can actually wrap the strings around like this, and then you actually get even more pressure. You get it from both sides of the screw. Um, won't do that right now, but that's an option that you can do. Get these guys finger tight, just so, but to where you can still pull the strings through the mechanism if you want to, but then they'll stay where they are. Now this is where we set the location of the end of the snare wires. So get them to where they look centered on the head relative to the edges of the drum, and then hold them in place and pull these guys through so that there isn't a bunch of slack on the string. And once you've done that, that looks pretty good. Remember that when the tension comes on on this side, they're gonna pull this way a little bit. So you don't want to have them all the way to the edge, but also you gotta realize that they're gonna move a little bit um, when the snares are actually engaged. And then we cinch them down, and that looks pretty good. So when I pull on this, by, not by the wires, but by the end plate of the wires, I can see where they're gonna be when they're under tension, and it looks the same on this side when I look at that, so that means that they're basically centered at this point. Then we gotta spin them around, and look at the mechanism. Now, this is the, this is the fiddly side because it's adjustable. So, Theoretically, I'm gonna put these like this. So theoretically, we wanna have some adjustability in terms of how tight the wires are. If we're bottoming out one way or the other to get the right tension, that's not gonna be the most versatile thing. So we wanna make sure that we have enough slack in the mechanism to over tension them, which we're not gonna do, and also enough to back them off to where they're almost not touching if that's a thing that we want. 
And the way to do that is to kind of look at your mechanism and figure out how much throw it actually has. Um, every one is different. And right now, I can see that if I tighten it all the way when it's engaged, that's as tight as it goes. So we don't want to start here. We want to start somewhere in the middle of its movement, maybe like six or seven turns down. So now we've got a fair amount of movement that's possible here. And if we put the wires on now, we're going to have enough room to tighten them up. So same goes here, put them in the wires first. These are already loosened because I did it earlier. We're going to do the same exact thing. We're going to feed them through and keep them next to the screws. And now here is, here is the part that to me is pretty important. And this is a little tricky to do on some mechanisms, but on a modern one like this, this is doable. Right now, the mechanism is on, but it's also got a fair amount of slack in it, which means that we have a, a, a pretty good amount of leeway to tighten it from where it is right now. So what I want to do is hold on to the strings so that the wires are tensioned against the head from me pulling on them. And I'm going to tighten these screws down while I'm pulling on the wires. And that means that there's an amount of tension on the wires. It's not as the amount you would use when you're playing, but it's enough to hold them against the head. And what that means is that we're not going to have to do nine turns to get them to engage. They're going to engage nicely after like one or two. Now, since these are strings, they can slide through the holes. And as you can see right now, they're a little bit crooked. So I'm going to turn the ends of the wires in the same direction, in this case clockwise, to make sure that they're laying straight on the head and neither the ends are twisted or being pulled by the strings because we want those strings to be pulling on either side evenly. Now this is the point where we turn the drum over and figure out what we've got at this point. Right there you can hear that the wires are not engaged even though the mechanism is. And that's because we put a little tension with our fingers pulling on the strings, but we haven't actually turned the knob on the mechanism yet. Now with the drum in front of us, you can hear they're not really there. But since we put all that slack in the mechanism earlier, now Tighten them up, and there they are. I have enough slack in the mechanism to over tighten them, which you know might come into play as the strings stretch out a little bit over the time of playing, which they will do because they are fabric after all. But I can definitely get a real tight sound. And it sounds really nice. At this point, if I was unhappy with this sound, the first thing I would do is check to make sure that the wires were still pulling evenly, and then I would start to mess with tension maybe on the snare side head or the batter head. But since I'm, you know, I'm fairly familiar with this drum, these hoops, you know, the wires are a new thing, but ultimately they are just snare wires. Uh, that's basically it. There isn't a lot else to worry about other than adjusting tuning for the tone that you want, sustain, different things like that. This drum itself is pretty dry, pretty articulate. It went right there, right out of the gate. And I still have a lot of room to change the tension on the wires, which I want all of the time because you never know what you're going to need. And then we could go through a bunch of different tensions with the snare side or with the batter side at this point to experiment with sound. But as far as the installation process goes, we have a level snare side head. We have evenly and correctly installed snare wires that have plenty of room to adjust. And now you can just go play your drum. So to sum up, don't be afraid to change these things out. Just remember that there's a few little details to watch. And the primary ones, just to sum up, are that the head is fundamentally level on the drum that there isn't part of the hoop that is under way less tension than somewhere else. Number two is that the wires are in the center when they're engaged of the head. They're not canted one way or the other and that they're also not twisted. And third is that you have enough room in your mechanism to adjust them the way that you want. So those are the primary points to take away from this. And 
you can check these adjustments on any drum, anytime. Uh, anytime I change wires on a drum, I do it exactly the same way every time. It doesn't matter how many lugs you have, what kind of drum it is, what kind of wires you're using, what kind of tuning range you want. You know, tune to the range you want, but these are just a handful of details that are the difference between having big, frustrating problems and then again, not having to worry about this stuff. Thanks for watching so much. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel and hit the little notification bell. Uh, so that you definitely get notifications from us when our videos come out and even if you don't see them We always drop them on Tuesdays at 12:30 p.m. Eastern time and Like with this video there are others that drop occasionally when you have something that we really want to say or address something like that and uh, Yeah, other than that, please let us know your uh, your woes and frustrations with your snare wires or if this is a thing that you just kind of lucked into being able to do easily. Uh, it was not easy for me. It took a long time of figuring out and I, no one knew how to do it. So, you know, um, hopefully this will help you out and uh, yeah, good luck.